Welcome back. We are going through the chapter on momentum. And if you remember, momentum is the product of a mass and a velocity. So the inertia of a mass, the, so an object that stays, that is still, doesn't want to move. You're going to have to put a force on it if you want to accelerate it. And if it's accelerating, you're going to have to put, or you're going to have to have a force to stop it. Okay, so if you change its velocity, you've changed its momentum. So to change a, a momentum requires an impulse, and an impulse is a force times a time. So if you want to stop a moving object, you're either going to have to exert a big force in a small amount of time, or if you'd rather, you can exert a small force in a big amount of time. The longer you can catch something, the easier it is to catch. The longer you can throw it, the easier it is to throw. That's the idea of that. So, so we're now moving into the idea that, that once you have an object that has a momentum, okay, whether it's a zero momentum, stopped object, or a non-zero momentum, a moving object, when there is a crash or an interaction between two objects, each with momenta, there is a conservation of momenta, the same amount of momentum as at the beginning as in, and as at the end. So the law of conservation momentum here is stating in the absence of an external force, the momentum of a system remains unchanged. So here we've got a cannon with a cannonball. So at the moment, the cannon is not moving, the cannonball is not moving. So then you put some gunpowder in behind the cannonball, some wadding in behind the cannonball, and you, you explode that gunpowder. The gunpowder gun will instantly want to expand. As it expands and all the gases expand, it propels the ball forward, okay? So you are going to have a, you are going to have, at that moment, the ball has a momentum. The cannonball is going towards the right at a certain speed. But what is true also is that that cannon is gonna kick. I don't know if you shoot a gun, but a, your gun will kick, and some guns kick worse than other guns. So what's actually happening? So instead of thinking a cannonball, think of a bullet. Once I, once I ignite the gunpowder in the back of that bullet, the gases expand, and the bullet is propelled through the barrel outward, okay? Now the, the bullet has a mass and the bullet has a speed. Whatever that is, it went from zero to whatever that momentum was and the gun also went from zero to the same momentum, okay? That may puzzle you because you think, okay, my, my bow didn't move, but my arrow moved. My gun didn't move, but my bullet moved. But your gun did move. Your gun kicked back onto your shoulder gotten a bruise for that reason. So what happens? The gun is much more massive than the bullet, okay? So the mass, if the mass is big, then I don't need a lot of speed in order to give it the same momentum as something that is small with a fast velocity. So if I have a very low massed object like a bullet going at a high velocity, that is going to be the same as if I have a high mass object like a gun going back at a slow velocity. So the kick of the gun, you just don't, you don't even think about it. It just, it just comes back. The cannon does that, okay? Everything does that. Even if you were to have a pocket watch, I've got an old pocket watch, and it, it, when it's wound and the spring is tight and the spring is unwinding, okay, that's how the, the hands go around, the spring is unwinding, what actually happens to the watch is that it kind of yanks back in the other direction. So if your spring is moving counterclockwise inside your, your, your watch, the watch itself is actually going to want to move slightly the other way to resist that because there's a conservation of momentum. Whatever momentum is going in one, that it's going in the other. So at before a crash and at the end of the crash, it's the same. So crashes. I love this part of physics when you crash things into each other, okay? Because whatever you have at the beginning, you're going to have at the end, all right? Let's, so let's say you have a car going left and a car going right and they crash into each other. 
the car has a mass, each car has a different mass probably, and each car has a different speed. Now, it doesn't just have a speed, it has a velocity. So one car is going left, let's say that that has a positive velocity. The other car is going uh, right, let's say it has a negative. You can set whatever you set up, the opposite will, uh, of charge or opposite of, of sign will tell you which direction it's going. So if you have mass times velocity on one side, mass times velocity on the other, when they crash together, they're gonna have the same combined momentum at the beginning and at the end, all right? So the masses are not gonna change, but the velocities are gonna change, okay? So we'll see that this works in car crashes, this works with bowling, I like bowling very much for this, because let's think of, let's think of it as bowling. I have a bowling ball, it has a mass, it has a speed, it's going down the lane, okay? The, the pins have a mass and a zero speed. Okay, the pins are not moving, the pins have a mass. As soon as the ball hits the pins, the momentum is conserved. The same amount of momentum at the beginning and at the end. So when the, so when the, the momentum is transferred into the pins, they start moving. Okay, so the mass times the movement of the pins is equal to the mass times the movement of the ball if it were a perfectly elastic collision. You'll see that a lot of times it's not, so the ball keeps rolling sometimes. But if you can imagine it perfectly where one would stop into the other and move the other, okay? So I'm on ice skates, you're on ice skates. You, you shove me and, and I move forward. You stop, you're going forward, you hit me, you stop, and then I go forward. That's the idea of a perfectly elastic collision, okay? All right, so let's look at some other examples. So an elastic collision, again, is when, when they uh, collide, they rebound without deformation or generating any heat. Exactly the same amount of momentum uh, at the beginning was at the end. It didn't lose anything, okay? Because if it clicks, that sound lost some energy. If it got warm when it touched, that that touch lost some energy and that energy will be reduced speed okay if it's perfectly elastic uh, so let's look at um, let's look at B if the green ball and the and the yellow ball are perfectly elastic when they touch they bounce off of each other with the same speed at the end as they had at the beginning okay let's look at A if the green ball is moving and the yellow ball stopped and the green ball and the yellow ball are perfectly elastic, then the green ball will stop and all of the speed will then go into the yellow ball. That's called an elastic collision. Let's say, let's look at C. The green ball is going fast, the yellow ball is going slow. When they touch, then they are going to, uh, the, the fast speed will be transferred into the yellow ball. And the, and the slow speed will be transferred into the green ball. So when they go forward, this is if there's no deformation and no heat, uh, so that it's perfectly elastic, then the momentum will be the same at the end. They will both be going forward, uh, but they will have each other's velocity. Now, most things do not behave perfectly elastic. The only really thing that I know of that would act perfectly elastically would be air molecules. Air molecules are considered to bounce off of each other without losing any energy. But anything else would. So an inelastic collision is when there would be a deformation. So let's say I throw um, a can from the top of the roof and it hits the sidewalk and it crushes the can, okay? Part of the energy didn't bounce that can, part of the energy deformed that can, okay? So that deformation allowed it to uh, not go as high when it bounced. Even a basketball, if you were to look at a, a slow motion picture of a basketball, when it hits the floor, will, will deform and then reform as a, as a ball and then bounce. Okay, it deforms and then reforms. If it were perfectly elastic, all it would leave exactly the same uh, velocity as it hit but you know that a, ba a basketball is going to bounce high and then bounce lower, 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 lower. And so it's losing energy as it, as it does it because most things are inelastic. So here's two train cars. 
One's going a velocity of 10 meters per second, the other one stopped. So when, it ha when they at attach to each other, you see this is gonna be slightly different because now the cars have the velocity of the first, but they have the mass of both of them together. So that's gonna be slightly, um, slightly different. So let's do an example. A single car moving at 10 meters per second collides with another car of the same mass, M, at rest. Okay, so the, the, the masses are the same, so it, let's just say it's 10 M uh, and 1 M. If you know that, the con that momentum is conserved, then the whole amount of, of momentum before the collision is equal to the whole amount of, collision, uh, of momentum afterwards. Okay, so what is the one before? It is the mass times 10, that's the moving one, okay? And, it, and the other one is zero, so we just add zero. So on the, on the left side, we've got 10m, okay? On the right side, we've got two mass times whatever it slows down to because some of that uh, energy from the velocity is gonna be slowed down as now you have more to carry, okay? So it's going to be 10 times m on the one side equals twice the mass, since there's two cars, times whatever that new velocity is, solve for the velocity, right? So you're gonna have 10 m, uh, and then when you divide by 2 m, you'll end up with five meters per second, and that's how fast it's gonna go. So in order to carry twice as much mass, it's gonna go half a speed. Now life doesn't always work on train tracks, so if you were to have a car crash at different angles, okay, then you are gonna to have to do vectors again. You're gonna to have to say the resultant of these two cars that are crashing is gonna be the combined of the, say, the Y direction, that would be the purple car, and the A direction, or the X direction, which would be the orange car, and when it crashes together, the momentum is going to be together and the resultant momentum would be at some kind of an angle. So you're not always gonna have two-dimensional uh, momentum changes. You can have three-dimensional like this. So I'm just telling you that it could get, of course, more difficult, okay? And not only do you have two-dimensional collisions like car crashes, but you can have three-dimensional collisions such as a fireworks. So if you have a, an exploding piece, uh, you have an exploding firework bomb, as it blows apart, it's not going to blow apart into two pieces or three. It's going to blow apart into many, many pieces all going away from each other based upon its mass, whatever the mass of the, of the fragment is, and its direction and speed. So um, all of these put together, you would have to do a very three-dimensional problem. Doing a firework problem would probably get you a master's degree.